But yeah, well, welcome everybody, Vanya, Ricardo, Lindy. Nice to see you guys. Um, if you guys haven't already, um, make sure you create your, your first React app. Um, and then also I sent a, a code share inside of the Discord. So you guys can just copy and paste and, and you'll be able to be exactly where we're at right now. Um, I'll wait one more minute and then we'll, we'll get started. Let me just make sure everything's good to go. See, today we're going to be going over um, components, I mean, not components, props, class components, and then also we'll, we'll go a little bit into events as well. Um, let me just get this all situated. <clears throat> So yeah, guys, welcome to our second web dev uh, community. Um, we're just going to be, this semester, going to be focusing on React. Uh, last week, we went over um, just components, how to nest your components, all that good stuff. And um, we created this little uh, little list of books here and just had our, we have our book. We have our book list component here. We have our book component. And then we also have just a bunch of other small components that we're nesting together. And um, this all came together to make our, our book component. Um, what we're going to be doing today is the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be splitting up these all into different files. That way it's not all like so cluttered and everything like that. So um, first thing I'm going to do is, first thing you want to do is create the a books.js file. So we're going to be putting all of our book components inside of that file. So you just create a new file, you go into your VS code, new file, type in books.js, and it's gonna create a new file for you. So first thing you wanna do every time is import React from React. Make sure that's good. And then I'm just gonna copy and paste all this stuff over here. And we're gonna put it in here. And what you want to make sure that you do is you want to export the book component. Export. And then what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to access this book component anywhere in your file. So as you can see here right now, book is not defined, book is not defined because we have to import our book component. So we're just going to make sure to import um, book from that slash. Books.js. And boom, we have our we have all the books over here. So that's just kind of moving around the files, importing, exporting. That's all just uh using the JavaScript modules and everything like that. So yeah, anytime you want to use a component in a different file, just to usually what you want to do is have one component per file, depending on how complex it is. Um, usually that way you can just reuse it anywhere you want. Like if you make a, a button component. You just have a button component here, and then you can use it throughout your entire application. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get rid of these components here. Because we don't really need this. Let me minimize this that way you can see. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of that. And um, what I'm going to introduce is the, the props object, which basically um, props is literally just an object and what it does, it allows you to pass unique values per every component. Like as you can see here before, when we had um, these components here, it was just static information for each one. So as you can see, every single one is gonna be static. It's just the same information um, that we put there. But if we implement props, we're able to put unique values for every book. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these for now. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an image and we're going to um, put the source as props.image. Okay. Props.image. 
And then I'm also going to make an H1. And we're going to make this ops title. And then I'm going to make a paragraph and we're going to name this props dot um, author. So when we, when we refresh, there's not going to be anything there because we have to make sure to render the unique values per um, per book. But let me just go ahead and show you what um, props actually looks like, just so you can kind of get a an idea of what props actually are. It's literally just an object. So let me go to inspect element and go to console, ignore all these stuff. But as you can see, it's literally just an object. Over here in our index, we rendered how many, all these different books. As you can see, it console.logged the props object for every single one. So let's say I just, um, I just wanted to add something in here. Let's just say, uh, instead of, Instead of what I added over here, I'm just going to add um, genre, fiction. Refresh that. See, the props object accepted the genre and the fiction stream. So, what you want to do though is you want to make sure to match up. The, the, the objects what you have over here. So we have image, title, and author. So let's go ahead and do image. Actually, let's make an object really quick. Um, see what I do. So we're just gonna make a book object that way we can just access all of our, all of our information in one place. So I'm just gonna name this const, I'm just gonna name a book one and uh, we're gonna have the title uh, we're going to name this uh, this little Amazon and some random books. We'll use this this book right here. We'll name it um, title. We are water protectors. And the description we're going to name. Um, I mean the author we're going to name Carol. Windstorm. Um, and uh, the image. I'm just going to grab the image URL here. Copy image address. There we go. That should be good. So there we have the image, we have our title, and we have the author. So what we want to do, since we have our props over here, the image, title, and author, we're going to pull these values for this singular book object right here, book, book um, component right here. So we're going to do image uh, source. So image equals uh, book one dot image. And then we're going to do title equals book one dot title. And then we're going to do author. Name that, name author. Yeah. Author equals book one dot author. And so what that's going to do is that's going to render. book up here, unique value specifically for this uh, component here. So let's say we want to do another, let's do another book. I'm just going to copy this here and I'm just going to replace the values. Let's just, let's just get another random book. Let's say Obama's book, copy the image address. And author, and we just do the same exact thing we did here. 
So we're going to make sure we name it book two. Title. see what we just rendered. Cool. So now we have what props allowed us to do is it allowed us to render uh, different values for the same component. So this is all the same book component that we have here, but the props allowed us to render specific values for each of the components. So that is that is the kind of the basis of props. Um, let me see what I got next for the agenda. Um, so another way you can do props is you can actually, instead of just doing props here, you can actually just pass them. Instead of passing the props object, you can actually just pass the, the um, attributes themselves. So I can just pass title, image, title, and author here. And then instead of calling props every time, I can just go boom, boom, boom. And um, over here, actually, let me get rid of the props. And same thing. So you don't always have to use props if you don't want to. You can actually even, um, another way you can do it also is just uh, to find them here. And this is just, this is called destructuring your, uh, your objects. And um, we can make this equal props. And we can just make this empty. You have a props here, and then you can just put the object. You can either put it inside of here or inside the parentheses here. So it's just called destructuring. This is different ways of doing your uh, your props, your book props. Um, and so we have this, and those are the two different ways of doing your uh, your book props. Um, one one specific uh, prop attribute that. Uh, is a, it's a key word really, you can't change it or anything. Like for props, you can actually just name it whatever you want. You can name this, uh, uh, I don't know, bacon if you want. And it's still gonna do the same thing. But um, there is one, uh, one props object that is specifically, it's a key word you can't change is the, the children props. So, but before I go on, any any, any questions on, on props or anything you guys are understanding it so far? No, it's all good so far. Super interesting. Cool, cool. Um, so yeah, the children attribute is um, it's basically what allows you to uh, insert uh, JSX inside of your, uh, your opening and closing tags. So, I'm gonna actually create a new um, a new component. That way we can have our old one and our new one. So I'm gonna name this book children. I copy and paste the same one. And I'm gonna add the children in here. And so what you can do with the children is actually just to be like I said, you can actually add your um, JSX inside of these components here, so instead of the opening and closing tags. So let me import the children books. So I just imported the book children over here. If one of you guys could mute your mic, please, that would be appreciated. I think I can mute it. All right, cool. 
All right, so we just imported the, the book children from book.js. And we're gonna go ahead and add our new components. So name is book children. And you see how I didn't close it immediately. What you can actually do is you can actually add your own JS. You can add whatever you want in here. So let's just name it, let's just add a paragraph in here. And we're gonna put uh, a little world. And let me uh, call different props in. Let's use the same props. And so what that did, we have our children props here and it allowed us to put JSX inside of the opening and closing tabs. And then you can just literally just move this around anywhere you want. So if I just put it to the top, you just put it to the top. And it's pretty cool. You can just do whatever you want with it. Um, Wait, why did you call it children again? So it's it's called children because it's it's literally just it's a keyword. That's the like you can't you can't change it to anything else. It's just called children. Because it's it's basically a child of the the on it here. And you can put it inside of the, the opening and closing tag. So it's called children because that's that's the keyword that it is. And it's just a specific prop that um, React can pass. Like these you can you can name whatever you want, but children has to be specifically named children. And then you can just put it anywhere you want in your component. Text that is um that or like how do I put this? Um go ahead. Is children something that is appended to the original display? Like how you have a promised land Obama, children would just be that appended paragraph right there. Yeah. So you see, I just so I'm just gonna I'm gonna name this uh say this is like the fiction. So I'm just gonna put nonfiction. And then I'm going to put children. Children's going to be at the bottom. So let's refresh it. So oh, I get it. I see. I, I can put it. I always have to put it inside of the opening and closing tag. But inside of the actual component here, I can move it anywhere around I want it to be. So you see, I put it at the end. Um, and here it is at the end of the, at the end of the component. It's after image, title, author, and then so children is all the in between title and author, and it would still pop up right there. So if I like, put it between title, if I put it between title and author, um, it's actually going to be in between title and author. See, my fiction is underneath title and author. Okay, thank you. Uh, and that when I actually um when I actually when I go to the book list component, I actually um put it inside of the opening and closing tag. Um, it's always going to be right here. And what really determines where it's going to go is where you actually put it inside of your your child component. So yeah, that's that's children. Um, it's usually I don't use it as much, but um, for like like really complicated components um, where you want to put like stuff actually inside of there. Um, let's say like for uh, let's say for like a button, instead of um, instead of typing it as a prop, you can actually just put the children and put the text inside of inside of here. For um, I guess just to make it make make more sense. Um, so yeah, that's children. Um, let's go on to the, the next part. So what we're going to be doing now is going to be going over how to use map. And um, basically, as you can see here, we have this whole object here, and um, it's kind of annoying like referring to every book and rendering each book separately. So there's actually a way with the JavaScript function called map where I can literally just with one function render all of these different components. And it's gonna go through an array of objects that we're gonna create in a second. But before we do that, let's kind of go through a more, like a more simple example of, of how to use uh, how to use map. So let's say we have a A names array. So it's a name John, uh, Jane, and Joe. So we have our array of uh, strings there. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to map 
we're going to use a function to map, basically print out every single one of these, uh, every single one of these values. So the name, this names map, and um, want to make sure we uh, actually this is names. Want to make sure we reference the array dot map, and we want to make sure that we put our little object in there, and arrow function, boom, and um, what we're going to do is we're just going to console.log name. And hold on. Actually, I need to move this. Weird. Oh. There we go. So, yeah, regular error function, you want to make sure that you put your name in there. Um, so, we're basically what we're doing right here. Oh, what was it saying? I'm just going to put this in another file because it's going to be annoying. I'll put this over here. Just comment out this for now so I can show what is going on. Is name supposed to have two parentheses in front of it like that? Or um yeah, I'm just I'm just doing something right here. But basically what this is gonna do, this is supposed to console.log every single one of these names here. Uh, I'm just going to go to the more complicated example. But what that does is basically it maps every single um, every single one of those names to the console log. So what we want to do now is we're just going to create a, a books array. And um, All right, so now we have a books array. And now it's saying all that stuff is indefined. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, get rid of this now. Get rid of all our different uh, books here because we're just going to create a map function instead that's going to literally go through the entire, uh, all of our books, our book array and just uh, render all of them. So we're going to re reference our books array. And we have a books and it's going to map. And then what we want to do now is we want to return. We're going to add a return statement. And what we're going to return is our actual book. So we're going to go to our book. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to reference the values that are inside of here. So it's going to be, um, so our, our image is going to be 
books dot it's gonna be book book dot on image we're referencing this right here and then it's gonna be title equals books dot book dot title and then our author is going to be book dot author save that and so what we did instead of having two separate book components we have one fun one uh map function that maps every single one of our book components that we have in this array so usually when you have one or more if you have a, like a big data set of all these different types of values and everything like that um you want to make sure to uh, use a, a map function to go ahead and map out all your different components that are in all your different object data that is inside of your uh, array. So yeah, really useful function. Um, you're probably going to end up using it a lot. Any questions on the, the map function? Does that make sense to you guys? How would you append a, um, like the children to add a little paragraph to that with the map function still? Yeah, so kind of the same way. So I'm just gonna get rid of this here. So we're gonna add, so we have children here. So let's, instead of books, we're gonna use books children. And let's go ahead and add, let's say we want to add um, a genre. This is going to be nonfiction. This is going to be fiction. We're going to save that and make sure we have our children in there. All right. So then here, book dot children i believe this is the right way to do it actually never mind um it's going to be book oh. so you want to, yeah i want to make sure to put the paragraph in there i wasn't thinking book that children this should be it oh not children Johnny there you go so yeah yeah you have, you. yeah you have children you have the genre make sure the paragraph whatever you're rendering in there is good and then you're going to reference the book object and then whatever value that you just uh, added into your um, object there. So yeah, that's that's a children's web map. Let's look at whatever we have next. So it's kind of annoying having to list out all these different uh, attributes so one one the one way we can kind of avoid that is by um going over here we're going to uh let's use this component actually this one's a little bit we don't want to use the children um we're going to get rid of this here and put props And we're just gonna put our props like this instead for now. Image title author equals props. And what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna get rid of this, change it back to book. And 
go. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to pass all of these props into one object. And that object is going to be the book object. So make sure we put props.book. We're adding another, we're adding all of these properties here into the book object. And then over here, what we're going to do is um, we're going to uh, call the book object. So it's going to book is equal to book. And um, uh, one more second, I need to make sure I'm doing this right. <clears throat> yeah. Up here also, we need to make sure that we call all the different properties, image, title, and author. And that's going to be equal to book. Um, book, 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 book. What is saying? It's not defined. Add that after here. There you go. So what we did, let's make that look a little bit more simple. So what we did was we put all of our props into this book prop right here. And then we did the same thing here. So book prop. And we put the book object that has all of the objects here, and we put it inside of the book prop. So what that did was it kind of eliminated the use to have to add every single prop and the attribute that goes in. So there's a lot of different things, like with JavaScript, everything's, everything's objects, same thing with React. So you can really simplify a lot of your different things by just adding more props or adding more objects. Um, it's pretty cool. So that is the props and everything like that. Um, let's see what we have next. Any any questions on uh, what I just did there? All good. Cool, cool. And um, one thing you want to keep in mind when you're doing. Uh, when using the map function, so as you can see in the console, it's saying warning each child in the list should have a unique key prop. So usually, when you're doing um, the map function, React needs to know like what uh, what object you're at basically. So usually, what you want to do is you want to. I mean, usually, if you're like pulling this data from like an API, or whatever, it's going to have its own ID, um, unique, whatever. Um, but you want to make sure to tell React which object you're at. And um, when you're actually doing it inside of the, the book, you, you want to use the key attribute. And I um, just want to put index and index in here. And that should get rid of the error. So yeah, you want to make sure that you have some type of ID here to kind of uh, show where you're at in the where you're at in the the array. So that way um, it knows which one it's rendering at, at each time or whatever. So actually, you don't even need to put index here. You can also just do um, book dot ID. If you're getting it usually from your array. So that's still gonna not throw us the error. So that's good. So yeah, usually every time you you are using the map function, you want to make sure that your your array has a, a unique ID there. So one more way that we can um, that we can spread out the props is the 
threat operator. So I'm gonna do it right now is get get rid of this book prop there. Save this. And I'm gonna get rid of this right here. And what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna use a spread operator, which is something that was introduced in, um, in ES6, which allows you to spread out um, object values or object properties across, um, across a component. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'll make sure that's good to go. Actually, let me put this inside. Cool, so that's good to go. Make sure your component looks like this. And over here, we're gonna have our book and cool. So what this little cool syntax does right here, it spreads out every, every um, attribute, we have, every prop we have here, it matches it up with what we have here. So obviously you need to make sure that your, your values match up, your value names match up with what you have in your props. And then all you can literally do is just do the dot, 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 and then book. And that's just gonna spread out all of the different um, values, all the different props to match up with your, uh, with your values there. So it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty, there's so many different ways to do props. So that's just another way that, um, that you can use the spread operator, um, pretty useful. So right now, we're going to go over the class components. And um, honestly, in, in React, um, I, like, I, I personally like function, function components a lot better. Um, but um, you can use class components um, if you want. There's just different, uh, different ways that they deal with they deal with props differently and they deal with uh, state differently, which we'll get into next week. Um, but basically class components, they're not functions. What they are, they're JavaScript classes. And they they literally do the same exact thing, but the syntax is just a little bit different. So you have class, and um, I guess we'll name this uh, book class. And um, what they do is they extend react.components, which I need to make sure to import the component over there. And you have that, and then you're gonna always gonna have a render function, and Wait, you have your return what statement. What does that do? Say that one more time. Uh, you cut out. What does the book class extends do? So, it's what it, what it's ext if you, if you know anything about like object oriented um, programming um, in JavaScript, you have you're gonna have to you can have a JavaScript class, but it needs to extend um, React. So it's just sending the react.component class. That way you can actually utilize the, the render method and all that stuff. So I'm actually not uh, importing the, the, the component class. So let me go ahead and do that. There we go. I'm just gonna return something here just so I can get rid of the error. So, yeah, so it's a, instead of a function like we did here, like we did a const and we had a function, we have an error function and all that stuff, a class component is literally just a JavaScript class. And every, every JavaScript class needs to extend react.component. So I have react here and I had to import the component class. That way I can use it down here. Um, I mean, I, I personally don't use um, the classes too much, but I mean, there's, there's a time and place for them. And if you're using, if you're looking at old React code, you'll probably see um, a lot of like class components and you'll be like, what is this? And basically that's what this is. So I, I can literally just recreate the same thing, the same book components that I had. Um, it's the same exact way pretty much, um, but let me just go ahead and just do this. So when you're using props, what you have to do instead is actually you have to use the, the this dot keyword. So you have to go this dot props dot um, image. 
because we're inside of a class now. So we have to make sure we specify um, what value is that we're referring to. So every time you use props, you want to make sure to use this keyword. So let's put another H1. And this one, we're going to do title. So this dot props dot title. And we have a paragraph. This dot props dot author. All right, and yeah, I believe that's it. So this is literally identical to this. This is a functional component and this is a class component. So let's actually just go and well, I'll export this. And we'll just import it into our file here. And another div that way we can uh, add it in here so let's go ahead and add our book class and let's add our props image I just I just put the title and author in so we can just get this over with And then obviously the CSS is different because I, I didn't add the CSS or anything in there, but um, that is the, the book class component that we just added at the bottom. So it's really the same exact thing, just different syntax when you're creating the, the component itself. The props work the same way. Um, you just got to add this keyword. And everything works the same way for the most part. Um, once we get into state, it handles state a lot differently than functional components do. Um, so you got to be careful of that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for class components. Also, I mean, you, you can also um, you factor them the same way or destructure de them the same way. So let's say instead of having this here, I'm just going to have const uh, image title and author. And I'm going to make sure this equals this dot props. And then I can just do the same way that I did over here and just have our image, our title. An author. And it's going to work the same way. So you, you can destructure them however you want. If, if you like this better than you like the this dot props, um, you can do it however you want. Um, so any questions on on class components? That makes sense to you guys. Cool. All right. So we're going to go over events really quickly, and then um, that should be it for today. Um, Let's go to our book component here. Um, so in React, you have obviously you have like the actually let's just create a button. So I'm gonna create a button here. And I'm gonna add an on click method. So that empty frame. So yeah, we're gonna add the button. I don't know why the buttons aren't showing up. Oh. Just super tiny, that's weird. There we go. Why is it not showing up as weird? Oh, I'm stupid. So yeah, we have our buy now button. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add an on click method for when we click the buy now button, we're gonna want a, a little alert to show up that's gonna say, hey, uh, 
you just bought this book. So, I mean, you're just gonna go ahead and just create a, a book. So I'm gonna name this, I mean, a, a component, I'm a, a function in this click handler. Make a little error function here. And every time that we click this button, we wanna do alert. Thanks for buying book. So we have our function here and we're gonna go ahead and put our function inside of our on click. Actually, I'm not gonna parentheses. If you put the parentheses then it's gonna automatically trigger every time that you, uh, you render. So now we have a buy one, buy now. Right, every time we click it, we get an alert. It says, thank you for buying book. So, I mean, that's pretty much just JavaScript, but that's how you can add events into your, uh, your code there. If you want, you can also just um, do a quick error function. Instead of defining your function over here, you can actually just define the function here. Oh, counseling, that's it. That's why I'm not alerting. So yeah, you don't always have to define it in here. You can you don't have to define it outside. You can actually, if it's a quick little little function, you can just create error function and put it inside of the on click there. So that's pretty much it. Um, what I'm gonna do now is um, I'm gonna add some uh, some more components here so we can kind of mess around a little bit and create a little website. So actually only have 10 more minutes left. Um, you guys have any questions over everything that we went over? Anything stuck out to you guys? Anything like that? All righty. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you guys want to keep staying, I'm just going to, I'm going to, I don't want to go more over an hour, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of create some random components and I'm going to create a header, I'm going to create like a nav bar component and I'm going to create a footer component and we're going to have ourselves a little website here. So, hey, nice. I'm down to stay for that. Cool. All right. So let's create a nav bar component. Our footer and our landing page. I love watching people better than me do stuff. Let's go. <laughs> That's yeah, yeah. That's Yo, you're, better, you're better at me than Java, and I'm probably I cannot look at Java, bro. I don't. Not gonna lie, I don't know if that's a flex, but <laughs> <laughs> he just, he just likes a curse. Pain, bro. He likes pain. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna kind of organize the file a little bit here because it's kind of a mess. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna change this book list into I'm gonna name this bookstore instead. Actually, let me just I'm gonna put book list into its own component. JS. So how long does it usually take you to build a website from like start to finish? Um, something simple like this with, you know, buy functions and whatnot. Um, it, it really depends. Like I, I mean, I, I created my first website. Make sure you guys, it's kind of like, it's just a one page website um, that I have here. It took me like a couple of weeks 
because I was still learning at the same time and I used some more complicated uh, components like uh, some style, I used style components and stuff like that. Um, I would say for React, it's depends on what type of website you're making. It's you, you might be able to just do just like bootstrap and HTML and CSS and create bust out a quick website. But if you're using like, if you're creating like a website that has like a bunch of, um, bunch of like uh, UIs are gonna be using over and over and over again, like buttons are gonna be using over and over again. And then big like other UI elements are gonna be using over and over again. It might be faster to just use React. And then with React, it also, you're also able to just reuse your components that you made in one website and use them to, for another. So it, it kind of saves time in that way. Um, but if you want to create like a quick one page site, it's really, and you, you're kind of ready, you already know everything. It could take like a day. Like it's, it's really, it's really simple. Uh, I'm sorry. So I have to add my, my, uh, book list component. Let me make sure to export that. And what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to create a bookstore. And we're just going to render this. So this is going to be our this is going to be our main uh, kind of uh, component here. That's going to pretty much render our entire book site. So store and we're going to import my book list. And we put book list in here. All right. I see we got. Oh. All right. So then, since we've moved, since we kind of refactored everything and made everything into its own file, now I need to import book from book.js over here. So we import book. Um, book .js. There we go. So we have our book list and we have our books. We're importing our books from the book file. So right now we have a book list component that has our book component inside of it. And we have our bookstore component that has the book list with all the different books inside of it. So now we're going to go ahead and create a nav bar and a footer and also maybe a little landing page it's going to be a header it's going to be super simple so don't, don't expect much but um let's import react from react and this is just going to be a function we name it navbar and what we want to return is a list, a bunch of lists here. So in, in this home, I'll name this uh, out. And we'll name this books. And we'll put a class name here for now. That way we can style it, name this nav bar. Actually, let me put this inside of a div. So we have our so we have our simple navbar component, a div with a bunch of lists, a list um a list tag with our list items inside of it. So we have that and make sure to export this. And then let's go back to our, we can exit this book list here. Let's go back to our bookstore and let's import navbar from navbar. All right. 
So we have nav bar. And there we go. Well, we gotta put some CSS for it, but that's our little nav bar component. And um, we we could even do it with props. If you want to use this nav bar like multiple times, you do it with props. Um, we'll add a, let's add a landing page. It's going to return a little h1. Welcome to our bookstore. Paragraph. Buy our books. Make sure this one's out of a div. And let's go ahead and put that underneath. Any page not expected it to Oh, you should always export your functions. Went to our bookstore, buy our books. And now let's create the footer really quickly. Am I going too fast? Or are, you, are you guys following along? It's the right pace, I think. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. And we're going to do another, let's see. Add a div and then we'll add, we'll add a header. And then we'll also add, might a, might a uh, list. And we'll name this. All right, so that's it recorded. It's good to go. And we're going to put this at the bottom. So let's make sure to import it. Coolio, Coolio, Coolio. All right, now that all the components are built, oh, let me make sure to put the class names for each single one of them. And footer's good, landing page. I put the one for nav bar. Cool. I just load it here. All right, now let's actually put some CSS in here. See what CSS I had. All right, so first, we just want to make sure that all these uh, list items are uh, not like like that. It's just kind of stupid. There we go. And then put some padding. Cool. And then the style the nav bar. And let's make this color white. So you can see it. Cool, cool, cool. Um, 
So pattern for this too. You just know those cool. codes off the top of your head. I mean, I know I'm not like a CSS expert because there's just so much CSS to know, <laughs> but I know like the basic, like you always be padding, background color, color like that. Um, I mean, to this day, I still find myself like looking up CSS, like CSS on how to center the look it up and then W3 school pops up and just copy and paste everything that's there. So CSS, I mean, you I don't think anyone's ever gonna like know all the CSS in the world. You can learn like like a bunch of CSS, uh, you can learn like you can learn like the fundamentals like Flexbox and things like that, but you're probably gonna always end up Googling CSS to like figure out exactly what you wanna do. Um, but yeah, so that's the nav bar. We have that for our landing page. Let's add some padding for that. That way we can make sure it's kind of centered a little bit. Cool. And then finally, let's do the same thing for the footer. I'll name the background color one, two, one, two. And the H1 will make it white. Cool. And then let's add some padding. Cool. All right. So, yeah, we have our a little bookstore site, nav bar, tiny component. Let me put inside this side. So you have nav bar here, which is right here. We have our, our landing page, which is over here. We have our book list, which is this right here. And we have our footer down here. And if you actually have your, um, the React tools, the React developer tools, you can actually see every single component that you have here. So we have the bookstore and we have the nav bar up top, we have the landing page, the book list with the different books and we have the footer. So I would, if you're gonna be doing React development, I would highly recommend installing these, it's kind of useful. Um, but yeah, so I mean, if, if we were making like, like Amazon over here, we would, React would definitely come in handy because we could literally just like list out all the different books we have. We would have a component for here, we have a component for here, we would have our component right here, component on the side. And then we would use those components on every single part of the site. So, I mean, that, that's where React can come in handy when you're like scaling your websites and everything like that. But yeah, that, that makes sense to you guys. Any questions before we head off? Honestly, everything was super solid, bro. Thank you cool. so much for for showing for showing everything. Like, solid stuff. Yeah, man, that was super sick. I appreciate Thanks it, guys. So appreciate it. Hour. Yeah, literally. And um, yeah, I mean, next week we'll actually get into um, actually like making changes and and react with uh with state and everything like that. So it's gonna we're gonna be starting to create some pretty cool things. Maybe create like a little app. Um, I'll, I'll figure out an event we're gonna be doing, but yeah, keep um keep practicing, keep uh keep learning. Um, I'm, I'll send some more resources uh, when we get off of this. But uh, if you guys don't have any more questions, I, I think that's it for today. Awesome, thank you, brother. Have a good one. Thank you too, bro. You. Bye bye. Thank you so much, Nate. Take care, guys.